So uh, first thing I want to do is um, Betsy had been asking me about a guitar. Guitar. What chords are or what keys are good for guitar? How do I pick songs for guitar? And let me show you this chart, and I'm going to email it to you. I just made this up in like five minutes, so it's very quick reference. I'm sure there's something better online, but instead of looking for five minutes, I just made it. So <clears throat> here's some guitar chord thoughts. Um, these are the easiest to, in order of easiest to learn. The key of G, obviously G, C, D, <laughs> but then the six is E minor, which is very easy, and then the two is A minor. James, is that underlying? Is that your spell checker? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't like E and M. It doesn't think it's a word, which is not. Uh, key of C, it's easy to play in if you don't play the bar chord F. So that's why I said learn the easier ways to play F. And F it's really an F major 7 that people will really play. And that's totally fine. It's totally fine. Guitar is made to be voiced with added notes. It's made to have sevens. It's made to have seconds. It's made to have fourths in the chord, and that's okay um, most of the time. Uh, then key of D, <coughs> D, G, A, F sharp minor. Oh, I, need, I should have put that on there too. You need, you should probably, uh, there's an easier way to play F sharp minor as well. There's an easier way to play F sharp minor. One thing about that is probably the first bar chord to learn, and even an F sharp minor 7, which you can just use one, one other finger. Um. So that is true. It is. It's easy in bar chord to learn, and the first one you should do. Uh, key of A, A, D, and E, and then C sharp minor, E minor. Uh, learn the multiple easier ways to play B minor and B minor 7. There's multiple ways to do B minor that are not bar chords. And then key of E, uh, E freaks guitar players out like the, a one year, you know, a guitar player that's been playing for one or two years that hasn't had much training yet. They freak out the first time they need to play an E. But really, E is a guitar key. It is such a guitar key. And the reason is, um, I don't know if this will be helpful at all. Who is a guitar player in here? Okay. My second instrument. Okay, so. Let me show you all, for the guitar players, you'll see this, and maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Um, and for the non-guitar players, even if 1% of this sticks, it might be able to help you identify what I'm talking about when you're pointing other people to it. But the key of E is really a guitar key. And what I mean by that is, you've got your normal shapes in E, E, normal shape, A, three fingers there, normal shape, B, is the bar chord, so that's hard. That's what people get freaked out about, is having to play that, which is hard. Or B sus, which I still try to avoid. <laughs> but it sounds good. So E is a guitar key in this. You can do a power chord shape for lots of things in E. What that is, is you start with an A2. A2 is this right here, which is two fingers, and you have the second, which is the B string. Okay. You can strum all six strings. That's what's nice about A. And that, so even if you see an A on a chord chart, you can play A2. Your guitar player can play A2. But this is where it gets nice. Instead of having to play this for B and this for C sharp minor, you've got this. Go up, two frets, add one finger there. That's a B. Go up two frets. That's a C sharp minor. Go up one fret, you can do a D over E. And then E. And then E over E sharp, and it just goes from there. Um, so E is really, really, really a guitar key. So these shapes, let me go through these again. Do you know these shapes? Okay, perfect, all right. So A2, you go up two frets to B. Just two, they call the index finger two, right? Uh, no, it's uh, or is that four? Well, that's one, that's one. index finger is one. one. Index finger is one. Yeah, the thumb is T. Okay. It's, you know, that's what's the, the main thing that's hard for pianists, is you're used to yeah. this being one, yeah. 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 and now this so is one. Fifth string, second fret. 
These are certainly in the court chart somewhere. I just don't um, know where. That's what Paul Beloved teaches on his DVDs. Okay. And he's got a, and I don't even know if it's still available, but I bought it like 15 yeah, years ago. Yeah, it was ago. like, it was very uh, influential. And, and, that's Creed's beat. Yeah. You can go up two more presses, C sharp. Same. Same fingering. And then same fingering up three frets to an E. So two more frets and that's your C sharp? That's right. C sharp minor. And then up one fret. Same fingering. Same three, fret. three frets. Or one fret is D or D. One fret. More. Uh -huh. no. D. And then you said over E, so that's the bass. That's right. Yeah, D over E is. It's a D chord, but it's over E. Yeah. But the bass is playing E. That's it. And then the E is on seventh. Do y'all know these shapes of the A up here? And then up one more just for E. And the C sharp minor up there. You can go all the way up there. Did I do that right? That's just a D, you can go up. And that C sharp minor up there is. 11, 9. Did I do that right? A2, up, up to, two frets, uh -huh. and up, uh -huh. up two more, up one more, up two more, and then the last one. Up yeah. That's it. And then just a really easy, even, like just moving the E shape for the classic, you know, Lord, I lift your name on high, you know, you did, because you're just going between I, uh, E, a and B, and it keeps the E pedal. If you, you, you choose to use the E, the low E is the pedal, yeah. The, yeah. Easiest, yeah. easiest song That's to learn. Right. So, even if it doesn't make all that much sense, just you can tell your guitar players there's an easier way. Look for the easier way. It also just sounds guitar y, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, and then, so I talked about that. So guitar really, E really is a guitar key. Um, pianists don't necessarily like it. <laughs> Brass players really don't like it. <laughs> but yeah, then I just did this down here, mind. kind of a cap little capo chart. Um, obviously, once you get the theory of it, you can think in any key. Mm -hmm. But just easy keys, if you're looking for a song, and you're like, okay, what song do I pick this in? Okay, B flat is pretty good for everybody as far as instrumentalists go. Because B flat, is great for your pianists. They generally like flats, right? And it's all your wind flats. players learned it in band. All your exactly all your you know all your wind players learned it in band. And guitarists can slap on the capo three and play in G, or slap on the capo one and play in A. So what does that mean? So you if if if, if I go okay for my singers, it's going to be best to sing in. I'm going to say F. Uh-huh. And yes. um, they want to play in D. So, so when I give them their chart, I'm going to give them a chart with it in D and say, right. now put it on capo now 3. Now put it on capo 3. Yep. Okay. And now that's an F chord. Yeah, it's, it's really easy for a guitar player to change key. You can't do it in the middle of the song. That's, that's, like, that's where it gets challenging with all the key changes in a lot of yeah. We do, uh, we, do, we do forever and it's an F and I just don't want yeah. We do a key change to G and I just forever. I will, I'll change my capo over. Yeah. Y'all do that? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I just drop out so I just play it an F. But. You can get a rolling capo. You don't get as good closure. But if you have a song that changes keys more than once, it's handy just to be able to roll it up and down the neck. I, I went to a guitar workshop and the guitar player said, quit being a wimp and just learn how to play under the key. Well, that's, <laughs> that's that's 301 and 401. <laughs> yeah. It was it so, was it was at uh, it was at the uh, uh Austin, no, but uh, I looked on those um, some of the websites last night and <clears> the <throat> question was then in you know you hear well it kinda goes with it. You hear, and then you have to. So, you know, I don't know the names of all the songs out there. So, you hear a song. You hear a song, and you go, "Oh, I like that." Um, but it's too low, and uh -huh. I'm having to be the lead singer, and I'm soprano. So you want to raise it? Yeah. 
So every every website will allow you to change the key. Even Praise Charts and Lifeway Worship will have a couple different options of key. So let's just go to Praise Charts and you look for a song. Let's look at Living Hope. We've been talking about that one uh, today. And let's see what keys they offered. And the original's in E flat, recording's in E flat. So you're going to look at Living Hope and it tells you, you see that right here, keys? So it's got it. E flat, D, B flat, and C. And then it's got this other arrangement in A and B flat. So that's what praise charts. And Lifeway will have the same thing. And then song select, you can do literally any key. Right. The chart might not be as exact, but you can do literally any key. If you want to sing it in G flat, then do it. They don't know how to tell the tape of. Yeah, which is, I mean, you have to do the figure. Yeah. But the more they do it, the better they'll get. So, and then if you want to raise a, key, a, a song, so maybe <coughs> people's praise you. We yeah, their songs song. are really low. They're really low, I mean, especially for, for me. A's and G's. Yeah, they're low oh. well for me, for sure. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yeah, even a baritone. Uh, I hate it. <laughs> but this one was. That, I, I, my professor's name was Plum, Professor Plum. Uh, huh? And he is literally, he knew his stuff, and but he had no idea how to talk. I'd go into his office because you know you know that's what you're supposed to do. Go in and let him know. I really don't understand it. And he'd start again. I tried to find a student. I I did it. I mean, I, the, the capo I, is just transposing by half yeah. steps. But if you, you want to each press a half step, that's the. If you want to raise the key, just, just go and you. If you buy the chart from Praise Charts, it actually gives you all the keys. Well, I've done it with Song Select. Yeah. I, I know I can change it there, but then, you know, it's like, they look at me and they go, you want me to play what chords? Okay. Yeah. That's, so that, I'm going to change it. I'm going to send you this yeah. chart. Anybody yeah. else want that guitar chart? Oh, I love it. Tell me your email. Yeah. Right. Okay, Dean Davis. Uh, R6. Mm -hmm. At Westy Methodist, by the way. Anybody else want that little chord chart? I just made it up. It's not that fancy, but if you want it. You can send it to me too. That would be just the easier to understand it. Okay. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna send it right now. Boom. Alright. <laughs> Let me pick up some of the questions that I've been asked throughout the week. And then we'll uh, we'll go from we'll go from there if y'all have more questions because this is just kind of question and answer time and creative solution time. So um, one question that I received was how do you pick songs for your services when you don't know what your pastor is going to preach? Y'all ever have that problem? Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about I want to talk about two things regarding that. How do you pick songs when you don't know what your pastor is going to preach, and how do you know what's going to be the next good song for my church to sing? Or how do I even like filter through all of this music out there and pick what's good for my congregation? So let me offer a couple of thoughts, and then y'all chime in and give us give us your thoughts. So I know the camera's not pointing this way, but I'm going to use. Well, let's see. I could go over. This is probably the best whiteboard because. More people to see it. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about that. So picking songs, um, I want to give a couple thoughts. The main thought is this: think about picking songs um, liturgically slash um, order of service. And then also themes, which that kind of goes in with liturgically, but um, let's just think about that. Now, what I mean liturgically, um, I don't know what your church's um, flow is, but I, every week, for the most part, a few exceptions, go with a Isaiah 6 simplified. Isaiah 6 model of worship is eight parts. So we've I've turned that down to revelation and praise, which is really one goes into the other, but I've got that in one part. Second is confession and forgiveness. 
or assurance of pardon. And a third part is proclamation of the word, which is generally, actually, a sermon. But from time to time, if the song really fits with the theme of the message, or if you're singing like a preparation song, mm -hmm. like Come Light Our Hearts is a good preparation song, Speak O Lord, that is Getty Town in, that's a really, really great, that's a great song. The beginning of the service, right before the sermon, right at the end of the service. Good. And then fourth is commitment slash dedication. Maybe you, another word used for that is consecration. So those are my, that's what we do at our church, uh, as far as liturgical flow. And it's a Baptist church, but, you know, I don't like make a big deal out of it every week. But it actually says that in our worship order. Did, uh, did you get that from Dr. Bradley? No. Okay. Bradley, Dr. Bradley's book is... Okay. That's, 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 that's what Bruce Lee did. Yeah, that's Isaiah 6. Yeah. Dr. Bradley has a six-part um, rubric. That's similar, but yeah, I some did it this. It is. It's Isaiah 6. <laughs> but simplify it. Really, this is more from Brian Chappell's book, Christ Centered Worship, which is probably the most recent work um, that's kind of a really uh, popular reference textbook as far as Christ Centered Worship. It definitely draws from Isaiah 6, but it talks about how that order of liturgy and order of worship is all throughout Scripture and all throughout Christian history. That's Brian Chappell's. Christ-centered worship, and it's great. And it also has a lot of recommendations for songs and readings and scriptures for each each element of the service. Christ-centered worship. So that's really more of what that's from. Um, order of service, I mean, let's just break this down to, like, especially modern music. Fast opener. <laughs> <laughs> high energy. Yeah, high energy. <laughs> fast opener. Okay. How about, uh, we also have um, maybe uh, ballad worship. Like a ballad worship song, okay? Um, that often will flow in there. And then maybe we've got majestic. I'm just gonna go by that, like order of service slash kind of style song. And then you've got themes. The themes can be endless. I mean, the themes of songs that you wanna sing can be endless, but let's just name some themes of songs that are important for your people to sing at some point in time during the year. Let's name some themes. So I'll start off with comfort. And redemption. Uh, redemption. Let's just get, get like at least five or six. Confession. Here. Okay, confession. Well, confession's in our liturgical flow there, so I'm, no gonna, joking. I'm going for something that's not... Um, <laughs> Explicitly, like every week. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. All right. What else? God's love. Love. God's love. Okay. Let's get. Let's actually. I bet we could get ten. Community. Community. All right. Grace. We time that in the liturgical. Grace. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, look, I think of grace like over here. Yeah. You know, yeah. Really. Um, uh, how about this? Kind of ties in here, commitment, dedication, but how about missions? Or evangelism? Mm -hmm. Alright, what else? Um, like aspects of God, like Father. Attributes of God. Yeah. Trinity. Trinity. Yeah, I'd put that in there, yeah. Absolutely. Trinity. I, I would even say that's separate from attributes of God. Uh, heaven. What else? One more. The cross. The cross. That's, that's, that's over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, like, you know, songs of ascent, but that really goes under number one, I think. And songs of ascent. I mean, I mean, like your your uh, your openers. Second you know. coming. Yeah. Christ's return. Christ's return. Which could be in a heaven song, but maybe not. That's good. I mean, there's a million themes that we can sing about, that we should sing about, right? Which is good that we have a lifetime to do it, and we'll still fall short, but that's okay. Jesus perfects our worship, and then we'll be perfect in heaven. So, this, all right, you don't know what the pastor's going to preach, but you know that your people need to be singing this stuff. Um, and I think that that's, especially long-term planning, I kind of have a short list of songs that I want to do, 
And then I'm thinking, what do what does the congregation need next? Where do we have a spot where, okay, we haven't introduced a new fast opener in a while, and those kind of cycle out pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, so we need another fast fast opener. But this is the thing. Then I'm trying to think, okay, what's a fast opener that reveals something about God? Or what's a fast opener that's a response to praise? There's probably a lot of that, right? What's a fast opener that automatically will get you thinking about faithfulness or an attribute of God that we haven't talked about, even missions or community, whatever it might be? So I need a fast opener. Um, it awesome, can, awesome is Lord most high. Oh, you are, you were asking for suggestions? Oh, no, I was just... Oh, okay, there. I thought you were asking... But that. that's like Chris Tomlin, right? How awesome yeah. is the Lord most high? It's just awesome is the Lord most high. Awesome is the Lord most high. That's how awesome the song was talking about. Yeah. In the fast opener. Yeah. So this is just kind of some helpful things to think about um, when you're picking some songs. Where are we, you know, where are we lacking? I was going to say, along these exact same lines, you know, during the week, like if I'm listening to the radio or if I hear a different church service or YouTube, I actually keep lists of, you know, good open. I have a list for good openers that I update anytime I hear something, wherever I am. Can you email me that list? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's actually in the, uh, this, this, I keep it in my, my worshipteam.com uh, thing. Oh. The, the site I, I showed you, so yeah. I like, I'll like make like a, a set and, and save it, and I'll just like, add songs to it, but you can do it in, you know, Word an email that. file to yourself you know, or it, something, it, you know. James and I talk shop a lot and, and, and finding a good, fast song. And it doesn't matter if it's congregation, if it's handbells, if it's praise band, if it's a choral anthem, mm -hmm. it's just like, that's a, that, that's a challenge. There's a zillion of the ballad worship and, yep. and, 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 and half of them are marvelous. Just spectacular. Yeah. Well, they, on, on worship team, one of the, I didn't get a chance to show you this yesterday, but there's, um, on the old version, which was more like, it functions more like a database, it's not pretty, but there's a search function where you can search, uh, if you click on advanced search, you can search according to theme and speed. So you can put in, whatever, community, and then on the drop down, it'll have slow tempo, moderate tempo, fast tempo, and it'll just like spit out, you know, everything. Uh, the other thing I like about it, which ties probably more into like later, is you can actually search by uh, scripture. Yeah. So you can, you can put in a scripture verse, and then, you know, it's dependent on if the songwriters when they uploaded it, okay. put it in the metadata that this is from, you know, Psalm 33 verse whatever, then it'll, it'll spit out the songs according to the verse. So let's do this. This would be helpful. Um, if you want to, share an area here where you want to hear some suggestions from other people in the room. Because this is what this is. This is like brainstorming creative solution time. So, um, so we already brought up fast opener. So let me give a, a suggestion for fast opener, and then I'll hear some other suggestions for fast opener. Let me suggest we're about to start doing this. This is our God. It's by Sovereign Grace. And it also is a Trini Trinitarian. It's basically, it's kind of like a couple years ago, uh, Hillsong and the Newsboys did the We Believe based on a creed. It's a, it's a similar creed song, but it's it's not a slow ballad. It's, uh, it's fast, upbeat, and it's, it's really, really good. We're about to start doing that. We're also preaching about the Trinity right now at our church, so <laughs> obviously helpful. Anybody else have a fast opener suggestion? We're going to start. We're, we're working on um, great things. Yeah, Bill Wickham. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, I saw that on your list. So yes. I, I appreciate that information. Yeah, great things. I don't know that this is a suggestion. It's a, more of a a question and maybe just how you can actually instrumentize what that particular thing is. One I've heard, and, and I see that the youth would identify with it, um, turn it up. Turn it up. Which Planet Shaker. Like, I just heard that the first time on the radio, like, it's they, like on my way up here. It on, is like, it's okay. Day. I mean, yeah. it is actually, exactly does that. So I don't know if that's a usable, you know, how you translate that. I mean, it's singable. It's singable, but... Okay, that was going to be my first question. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was... 
don't you think? I thought it was seeable, yes. Mm -hmm. Turn it up, Moon Shaker. So, yeah, that's, so let's talk about that. Songs that are really electronic sounding. I'm guessing that I have mm -hmm. a lot of electronic yes. sounding. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing wrong with changing that up and going like an acoustic groove that you can make it really fun. I didn't hear that song. But I'm thinking of, y'all know the Hillsong Young and Free Alive? So it's, uh, I'm just about to make this up on the spot. So let's see if this works. But um, Alive is, it's, it's like an electronic dance music song. It's an EDM song. But you can totally do it acoustic guitar and like a home really going fast. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if, if you get your, your drummer to do something more with the kick drum and the cymbals, yeah. and, you, and you, get, you can get a good strum pattern going on the acoustic, which is a challenge for our band. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Sounds like um, you are more than my words can say. I'll follow you alone for all of my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your ways. Forever free in my mental space. You are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. that upbeat. Um, the great thing is that you should do whatever is good for your conscience, right? I mean, you could go, you could go, you know what four on the floor is for drums? Four on the floor is bass drum every beat. It's just bass, snare, bass, but the snare and the bass drum are together on beat two. It's just So if you do that, and you could just do down strums. You are alive in us. Nothing can You don't have to be stuck to the electronic thing. But the other thing is, um, you can do it multi-tracks as well. I will say this, I wouldn't do a live in my main service. <laughs> I wouldn't, I just don't, I wouldn't, it doesn't translate to my intergenerational context. I've seen it in youth worship and it was great, um, but uh, it's just something to think about. All right, so we've done fast opener. Any other, anybody else had an idea for a fast? About an unstoppable God by elevation. Yeah, that's a good one. That's okay. I'm about to sing something. I don't even know if that's it. Is it unstoppable God? Let your glory go on. Something like that. Yep. My congregation still likes, and we've been doing so like I forgot to originally sing it, but Happy Days that Tim Hughes. Oh, Happy Days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Tim Hughes. Yeah. Oh, happy day, happy day. Love that one. 
You wash my sin away. Oh. You can do the motion. Yeah. And all of his, all of his songs have like really solid theology too. Yeah, these do. They really do. Okay, any, somebody else tell me a need that you're like, what's a good this song? And let's give some ideas. I don't know what you mean by ballad worship. I've never heard that. Uh, so, so a ballad worship song would be like, Shout to the Lord, or uh, build, be, what a beautiful name, or even like build my life. Wonderful, yeah. merciful. Yeah, wonderful, merciful Savior. Oh, we sing all those. I've just never heard the word. Yeah, in a rock context, the ballad just means a slow song. Slow song. Slow song. Yes. Let it go down to in fact, when I bring in, you know, if I ever have to bring an outside drummer, you know, they, they may or may not know, like in the context where I live, they may not have ever played a worship song before. They may just be somebody I had to hire in an emergency. And so I'll just tell them, this yeah. is a ballad. <laughs> they know exactly this is a ballad. Right. Then you'll get it. Then take one. Anybody else need, have, a, have a need of a... A song? I would like to know, okay, so I'm Presbyterian background, but we all have hymns that, you know, commingle. Mm -hmm. So what are some good hymns uh, you bring in? I'm, I'm just now going to have to take over. We've only had contemporary for two years. Guy play. All of the tempo Do you want to do some, are you asking like just hymns that you can do with modern instrumentation or are you talking new arrangements? Are you just talking okay, or maybe hymn? I need to say, ask how do you take, um, okay, let's do holy, 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 everybody knows holy, sure. holy, holy, and just contemporize it so that I'm satisfying some of that Traditional. I'm satisfied okay. the traditional, yeah. but I'm satisfying right, those who say. Well, we, I'm sure we have a, a suggestions of that. These are. I'll tell you uh, two arrangements that I've done that contemporary. One is Phil Nitz. The it's called the Hymns Project. Okay. The Hymns Project. Slash. It's called I'll Hell the Power of Jesus Name, and it yeah. is. Contemporary instrumentation. There's a choir book with it, and there's resources. It's produced by Brim, Brimwood Benson, um, and the, the whole book has "Holy, Holy, Holy, Fairest Lord Jesus, Take My Life and Let It Be," "All Hail Crown Jesus Name," "Crown Him with Many Crowns," "Christ the Lord is Risen Today," "Be Thou My Vision." It doesn't have to be joyful. It's like ten or eleven titles, um, and so that's one arrangement I've done. That they're they're really good. And it's very it's very modern sound. Does um, hymns for hymns for praise yep. and worship exactly. have all the support? And we yep. use a lot of those because they've got such nice alternate alternate harmonization. And they've got like five. I don't even know. How well, they've got today. songs for There's praise and worship. Eight versions of oh, hymns for people. praise and worship. No, that's, okay. that's songs for praise. No, they've got a bunch of hymns too. Songs yeah, they've done more hymns now too. Awesome. Oh, that's songs. Yes. <laughs> they have songs too, but they okay. hymns. I love you. Maybe. Anybody else have an arrangement oh, no, for her context? <laughs> I'm thinking like Bob Coughlin. He's yeah. done a ton of hymns, and also correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, he comes also from kind of a Calvinist context, mm. theologically, mm. Yes. and so I think that'd be a good fit for Presbyterian that, Church. I don't know if Sovereign Grace has done a holy, holy, holy straight up, just but... Uh, a, just look up for Bob Coughlin. Yeah, well actually, so this is Bob's website, worshipmatters.com. And then he's also, so worshipmatters.com. And then he also is the director of Sovereign Grace, which mm -hmm. I put that on that resources. They're they're on there. Sovereign Grace. Okay. I'm I'm trying to think of, of who it is, but the Holy 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 Savior and King. 
You are Lord, you are Lord. It may be better. It's gateway. Is it gateway? Yeah. Okay. Do that. Gateway. That's a it's a pretty nice straight I mean straight holy 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, melodically it's yeah. it's the same as you've ever sung it basically and then it tacks yeah. on a chorus. Yeah, yeah, a chorus. And it's yeah. and never yeah. that's great. So that's gateway. Yeah. Yeah. Gateway. Yeah. gateway. And gateway also has if your church doesn't yeah. know this one, come out bound, come out key. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. it's, it's yeah. really easy to sing. Oh, it's come now found of every blessing, but then they added uh, come now found, come now, it's added refrain. Okay. Come now found, come now king. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come now found, come yeah. now king. So that was, that yeah. first one yeah. is Stephen, right? Yeah. So yeah. Stephen, that was holy, holy, you Savior, are. Uh, Savior and king. I think it's holy, holy, holy. holy Savior and king. And then in parentheses, Savior and king. Great. I've yeah. used this as an anthem, it's great. For, it, it works for my traditional service too. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and it's, it's published by Gateway, but was it in a collection? No, the Gateway Gateway is the artist in this case. Yeah. Oh, Gateway yeah. is the artist. Gateway is the artist. Yes. Yeah. You know the well version of Gateway with Carrie yeah. Joe, and it's a little bit higher, and that's what we use. Yeah. But, but you probably just on any of the music websites, just search Holy, Holy, Holy Savior and Key. It'll be there. It'll be there. Yeah. Okay. I was looking on that because I'd never heard of the Shane and Shane thing that you told us about yeah. yesterday. So I was looking on there last night before I went to bed on the worship initiative. Uh -huh. And I noticed, you know, they have a whole section on just hymns. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. They just started recording some hymns that are really, obviously, they're very modern and sounding, but it's classic hymns and some modern hymns. Really good stuff. And I have to say thank you to everybody. Um, this has been a great class for me, and I'm going to sing for the first time just because of this. I kind of went on a whim. I'm like, okay, well, I think I'll awesome. do this. So I'm going to. You'll definitely, you know what? Shane you're going to is there. You're going to hear some hymns that will be in a modern sound um, at there. So that'd be great. All so, right. One thing on hymns, and I'm sorry. I just, sometimes just by doing, just doing the hymn straight out of the hymnal, but with your instrumentation, with acoustic guitar or whatever you have and not changing anything will be enough for a lot of congregations because it gives it the contemporary sound because of the instrumentation and until you find another arrangement you like you know it's been around for 500 years for a reason exactly. yeah. I, I, I still love Chris Tomlin's I Stand Amazed um, I mean it, it's it's how, how marvelous. Yes. It's called mm -hmm. by three different names and different hymnals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. But um, I mean, that one translates really well, I think, in almost any context. Yes. And you could, it, you, you, could, you could assemble any kind of band around that because it's so simple. And you can make a bluegrass band. Yeah. You can make a rock band. You can make a string arrangement. You can make it a cappella. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I had a question that was um, asked by my father that I will get to. So I'm excited about that question. It'll be fun to talk about. But I want to see if there's any other any other questions, uh, some, some sort of solution that you're looking for that maybe we can brainstorm about in five minutes. So, so I'm not a, I play the piano. So I try to incorporate different styles in what I do. But it's difficult to find really good piano, contemporary music, for piano, because a lot of it just doesn't for necessarily solo lend. Or for yes. playing with the band. No solo. For solo. Well, I mean, playing with the band, I usually he usually gives me yeah. place charts, but then I change it up to suit whatever. I, yeah. What everybody else is doing. Do y'all know any <laughs> so, solo solo piano? I mean, I've got some Mars Cave stuff, and um, but but that's not the most contemporary. Yeah, I need to ask, man. We have one book of duets. That's it's pretty nice. It's pretty simple, but it's a uh, it's some 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 current stuff. I'll find out. I know, pedal point prints some, but most of those are really yeah, pretty. Pedal points. Oh, oh really? Did you see that on the cover? This is <laughs> no, I final, didn't look at the. Cover it's our now. final issue. Let me ask Meg what that book is that we have. Uh, Camille. Okay. What's I mean, that contemporary I'll put it on your piano duet book? I mean, I've got some Richard Kingsmore. He does some yeah. contemporaries. The other, thing, That's another the other thing I would say maybe you could do is find some of those arrangements, the choir arrangements of contemporary mm -hmm. songs, and then just throw in the melody. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like, make, like, youth 
choir arrangements of the modern, because there are for youth choir, they, they stay very up to date yep. a lot of times. Yep. And you're Cliff Duran, you're uh, Joshua Spock, you're David Wise, uh, those guys, those arrangements of the, of the mm -hmm. contemporary songs, just take that and then add the melody in. All right, so my dad's question was, what was the process? I've got a website, so um, just bear with me because I'm going to spend 11 minutes of self-promotion here. Um, but it's my dad asked, so there you go. I was seriously interested because, like, you know, you're talking about the different things you have to use to connect an instrument yeah. to a computer and then all Hopefully that. Hopefully this so. might be actually of interest or help to you. So the question is, how did I go about putting stuff together for my website, specifically the recordings and the charts, right? More the recordings, but the, the, recordings. Charts, the, the charts are good too, because you probably use Finale, right? Uh, the charts are Finale, mm -hmm. that's right. So <clears throat> let me talk about the process for two songs I've written and getting them on my website. The first song I'll talk about is You Saw Me, because that's probably the best song that I've uh, been able to write. I wrote You Saw Me. I first started writing it, I can tell you, December 26th was a long time ago, 2011, the day of the Alamo Bowl when Baylor beat Washington in the highest scoring bowl game of history, but it only was the highest scoring game for five days. <laughs> because then West Virginia beat somebody by a ton. Anyways, that, I started writing it that morning. And then I uh, worked on it for about a year. Uh, a little less than a year, I showed it to my seminary professor at the time, an adjunct professor named Stockton Helding, who is a MD, do you know what an MD is in music? Music director. So he's a drummer, but he's in charge of his worship band. He's not the singer, he's not the front man, mm -hmm. but he's the one that sends out the charts, he's the one that runs rehearsal, and Stockton uh, is an industry guy, he's a jazz drummer, Anyways, he helped, he gave me some suggestions on it, told me to add the third verse. I wrote a third verse, and he's like, yes, this is great. We sang it in our chapel services in Pete Town in Southwestern. And then my good friend Tim Lawless helped me put together the demo. And that was, in his, he had a home studio. Tim used Logic Pro on his Mac. He had, um, I don't know what his user interface was, because I didn't know about that at the time. He just helped me. He had a closet in his house with uh, you know, sound paneling, the foam little egg carton looking stuff mm -hmm. in his closet. Close the door, cables coming underneath the door to my guitar, headphones, and I record laid down the, the guitar. Well actually, so first what you do, you have to have a you have a click on your on your recording. So you've got the click. First thing you do is lay down a, a bass track, either piano or a guitar so you know to go by as you record the rest of the song. So I think we probably did the guitar. Lay down the bass track, and then you can hear the guitar as you sing, so then I sing, and you have to do lots of takes, and uh, add some harmonies, uh, multiple days, multiple weeks kind of a thing, just come back at it, he worked out a little bit, all right, we need to do this part again. Um, add a guitar, the piano, he played on his Nord into, his uh, UI, his user interface, recorded the piano part. Um, the mandolin, I recorded the mandolin. And the bass, we just used software. So the keyboard played the bass guitar. And then the shaker was live. He did a shaker, like a real shaker, <laughs> into a microphone. And the drums were studio produced, or just uh, Logic's drum machine. But he, for that song, Logic gives you two capabilities for drums. You can use a drum machine and create your drum track, which you literally have to play everything. Like on a keyboard, you're playing like <laughs> on your keyboard. But then you can go back and edit it. You can add notes and, and everything like that. He, we did that song that way. We literally wrote the drum part from scratch on the software. But you can also on Logic, you can have, they have drummers. They've got nine drummers, it's pretty cool. They've got nine drummers that play different styles. They just made up names for them. And then they've got, each drummer has like six different patterns, and they're adjustable by simple to complex, loud to soft. And they, you can do different sections. Add a chorus, add a verse, add a fill. You can do fills, adjust the swing. Um, and that's all on Logic that's Pro? That's all on Logic Pro. Okay. 
GarageBand also has drum machines too, but it's not as comprehensive on GarageBand. And it's, that's only, the it's only Apple. That's only Apple. Okay. Now, Pro Tools is the is the PC version, or as we learned yesterday, Adobe uh, has one. I forgot what it's called. Perform or something like that. Um, Adobe also has a recording interface. So, Tim helped me do that. That's the best. That's the best recording I've ever done, and I had help. <laughs> so. Um, but then, so then I'll talk about Holy Spirit Have Your Way in My Life. This is a recording that I did. Started writing the song in a songwriting retreat. Got lots of input from lots of people. Uh, finished writing it the next spring. And then I put together the resources, so like the lyrics and theology behind the song. And uh, we can look at that. And then I did the demo recording, and for that, same thing. So in my office, actually, I stood in my office, which is not soundproof. But I usually do it at night, or I put up a sign on my door, don't bother me, I'm recording. <laughs> and um, yeah, same thing, you lay down on a track to, to go by, and then you can record your vocals. Um, and then you either choose, I'll, for the drummer, I'll choose if I want to make it like from scratch, or if I want to use one of the tracks of the, that the drummer plays. And then the charts, there, I usually go with chord chart first, then lead sheet, and then I organize it. And I tr usually won't record until I've made this harm, at least for my church. I'll make the vocal arrangement first so that I can sing at least one of those harmonies in the demo. Um, so, now this is just how I do it, and I'm not famous, so I don't know if it's worthwhile or not, but I'll play you part of Holy Spirit Have Your Way Mind. And that's Claire when she was, that's my daughter when she was like a year and a half. Your oldest daughter. My oldest daughter, which is a year and a half.
So I'll just mention uh, Very nice. one of them. Yeah. Thanks. Um, this is uh, hosted on SoundCloud. If you don't know, SoundCloud is free. So SoundCloud is useful. Um, I mean, for me, I can put stuff on there that you can listen to if you go to my website just so that there's recordings available for free. But you can use SoundCloud in other ways too. Like let's say you wanted to teach your choir, like you needed to record the tenor part for a hard, you know, section of your choir, you know, your Christmas cantata, and there's not a listening track available. You can use SoundCloud to host that, or you can record, I will say that. Um, I have done this some using my recording software, recorded the listening parts for my choir. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I have that, it's really funny. Um, so, and you don't have to have logic to do that. If you have any kind of recording software, um, you can probably do it on like Ableton. Like I said, it's only available, it's available for $100. Did any of y'all have Ableton? I need to update it, mine's very, very old. But if you have Ableton <laughs> and a microphone and, you, and an interface for your microphone to go into a box, to go into a USB cable, to go into your computer, you could record your choir listening parts. So, so you use a um, a platform. I guess this is the word I'm looking for, like like MP3, but you know, Soundwave or whatever. But and then you can take that file type and then put that in SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. right. That's okay. right. If you okay, so technically we're out of time. So. Don't stick around if you need to get to the reading session. But if you want to hear something funny, I'm going to see if I can find my listening uh, track where I recorded all four parts to something. <laughs> <laughs> but we're actually out of time. Thank you all for coming. And um, if you want to contact me, my, my info has been on my handouts. If I didn't give you my info yet, I've got business cards. Um, I appreciate the discussion, even if you didn't learn anything today, but you contributed to other people's learning. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, thank you all so much. Thank, thank you. you.